What is going on y'all? Check me out here and we are talking about iOS 18 and all the things that I feel you need to know. Changes aren't like brutally apparent, but it's there as you start navigating through your phone. So let's talk about how to use it and some better ways to use it. All right, first and foremost, Control Center. I'm excited that we can now access so many things from Control Center, but at the same time, it's a little overwhelming. So there are two ways that you can clean this up. One way is to long press on an empty area and then hit the minus symbol to remove something that you don't want. Because you can always just navigate to this last page here that's a circle and hit add control and add whatever you removed. So in that case, I removed dark mode, so I can just tap it here, and now it's on that page. It's still accessible, but you know, it's not right there in the forefront. So the second thing you can do is resize the icons. So for any of these that you see the little handle here in the bottom right, that means you can long hold it and drag it to make it larger. So I would just make a page of just square icons like this, or of these smaller ones right here, and that will help kind of like clean up what you're seeing. And if you look here in the top left of Control Center, if you hit that plus symbol, it'll let you customize your widgets. So that's another way you can go about doing it. And if you want to quickly turn off your phone, you can just long hold on the power icon in the top right and power off from here. I personally like having that option. But another cool thing I found in Control Center is the option to control your phone with just your eyes. Like, it's, yeah, let me just show you. So while you're in Control Center, if you tap the plus symbol and then go down here to add a control and search for eye tracking, tap on it. Now if we tap in the background here and then tap on that to turn it on, it's gonna have you first follow the dots on your screen to set it up so that way it can figure out you know where your eyes are. All right, so now I'm following the dot with my eyes as it moves across the screen. Dang, I moved the phone so now I gotta start all over. I still haven't figured out how to select stuff. Oh God, what am I doing? <laughs> it's a kind of cool party trick to say the least. <laughs> Another thing that you can do with iOS 18 is customize which apps you have in the bottom left and right corners on your lock screen. So like you can come here, long hold on your lock screen, then you choose customize, select your lock screen. And once you're in here, you can then either hit the minus symbol and remove what you see or hit the plus symbol and add something. So a little inspo for you. You could add the option for it to quickly recognize music. So now when I'm on my lock screen, I can just press this button here and it'll start listening to whatever song is playing and identify it. Or if you're the type like myself and you always have these random things that you need to jot down, you can make it quickly launch a note. You can have it open up your favorite app like Instagram, YouTube, whatever. Or if you're the type that likes to leave voice memos, then you can put that down there as well so you can quickly pull that up at any time from your lock screen. And also, I don't know if you know or not, but if your iPhone dies, it will still tell you what time it is. So you will see that on your lock screen, even if your battery is depleted, which I'm so thankful for because I think we leave sometimes more on our phone for the time than we do physical watches and clocks. Another area on your phone that you will see that has physically changed is photos. And similar to Control Center, it can be a lot at once. If you are the type that wants to customize the layout in here, you can just scroll all the way to the bottom, choose customize and reorder, and then select the items that you don't wanna see or use these handles here to rearrange the items to be in the order that you want them to be. To me, when I came in, it felt like very cluttered a bit. <laughs> so I just have my essentials selected in here, but I do love the fact that I can actually get rid of categories that I didn't really care to see. Now this next thing is gonna apply to those of you that have the action button, because you can now customize it to do a few new things that you couldn't before. So for mine right now, if I press it from anywhere, you know, it's gonna quickly launch a note. I'm always having, you know, these random things I need to remember or do. You can even have it open any app because what really takes it to that next level is shortcuts. So I can make this launch, you know, my Blackmagic app. Now, anytime that I hold on my action button, it's gonna launch my Blackmagic app. Another thing you're gonna wanna make sure that you do is head into your settings and navigate to your camera options. And within here, we're gonna go to formats. And then we're also gonna make sure that pro raw and resolution control is turned on. And then here where it says pro default, we're gonna tap and make sure that now says pro raw max up to 48 megapixels. You can now pretty much take advantage of the 48 megapixel cameras up here so that if you were to print a photo, they're more clear or if you're going to zoom in on a photo, it is more clear. And I do like that you're not fully committed to that because you can come up in here to the top right and you know just toggle that on and off as you need it.
Another thing I'd recommend doing that I've done is coming to your home screen and long holding on that and then making your icons larger. In turn, it gets rid of the icon label as well. So you can do that by hitting edit and then choosing customize and just select large within here. You can also tint your wallpaper by tapping the sun. And I'm loving how widgets work up here now because especially when you go over here to your, um, dang, I forgot what this page is called, but when you swipe all the way to the right, that page where you normally have your widgets, before iOS 18, you had like limited control in here. You couldn't fully rearrange them the way that you wanted, but now you can. Like I can put widgets wherever in here, which I like. But anyway, taking it back to your home screen, if I wanted to resize one of these widgets, I could just grab the handle here and drag it out to resize it. For apps that I already know have a widget, just hold on it and then choose the icon here for the widget and it will convert to it. Now two apps that I highly recommend which I have installed currently here is Launcher and Widgy. So Launcher let me have pretty much a folder up here that uses shortcuts. So if I hit something like clock, as you can see, it kind of transitions through the shortcuts app to get me there. So it's a little bit of a delay. So if you want that instant fire up, don't use that. And then Widgy, it just gives you these gorgeous options for widgets. So what I like to do with my widgets and especially my widgy widgets is create groups. And you can just swipe through the widgets in these groups. And I don't know if you all know yet, but you can now place apps anywhere on your home screen. It's still to me a little tricky. I feel like I'm chasing apps on my home screen. I don't know, am I the only one? Y'all let me know. But another thing you can now do from your home screen is lock an app and hide an app. So let's say for instance, I want my photos to be protected. I can long hold on it. I now have this option that says require face ID. So I can just tap that and hit require face ID. And now anytime that anything in regards to my photos needs access, not just my photos app, is listing out all the other apps that it will be blocked from as well. And now if I try to tap on photos, it will not open unless it scans my face. And you can do that for any app up here. Another new thing that came with iOS 18 is the option to send a message later. One thing I've noticed is that it only is accessible when you're messaging another Apple device. So like if you're using iMessage, but not when you're using, you know, SMS. So with that said, if you hit the plus symbol here, you should see an option send later. If you do not, then you can go down to more and you should see it within there. And you can also then, you know, drag it up by long holding it to rearrange it. Nonetheless, if you tap on send later, you can then come in here and type out your message and choose the time and date that you want it to send. And I was a little eager beaver, I already hit send, but it's cool because I'm still able to adjust the time. But now this message will send later at the date and time that I set it to. But if I want to cancel it, I can always come in here as well and hit the X and it'll no longer send. The calculator app. Oh my God, it does a lot now. <laughs> Way more than you know I probably need, but if you come in here and you tap this icon in the top left, it's gonna give you the history of different math problems that you've done. So you can always go back and look if you need something later. Another thing you can do if you tap this calculator down here in the bottom is choose a scientific calculator. I so wish I had this when I was in school. And another thing you can do down here if you tap is choose math notes. And this will let you come and actually write out different math problems and it will solve them. Another cool thing in messages is emoji tap backs. Like they're colorful now. Now I can come in here and you know, long hold and choose a tap back as I normally would. If I wanna add an emoji as a tap back instead, I can just hit the little smiley face here and then choose the emoji that I want. And now that will be the tap back on the message. Something else iOS 18 brings is the option to set a charging limit. So if you go into your settings and you search for charging, once you select it at the top here, you can adjust the charge limit. So like if I want my phone to only charge up to 95%, then every time it charges, that is as far as it will go. Like tires, batteries do have a life cycle. So the way to preserve it is to, you know, not constantly and always charge it to 100%. So if you're the type that is very mindful of that, you can now set that to be whatever you need it to be. Another cute thing with iOS 18 is in Safari. So when you're in here, this icon on the bottom left, if you tap hide distracting items, it will allow you to then tap on something that is visually distracting to you and remove it. It's not gonna permanently delete it, but it just gets it out the way. So I'm gonna hit okay. This can also be good for like different screenshots. If you got some personal information in there and you don't want it to capture that, you know, segment of it, you can select it and hide that particular part. 
But yeah, y'all, there are other things that, you know, iOS 18 has brought to our phones. As I discover more, I'll post more, but feel free to check me out on Instagram and TikTok because I also drop some tips and tricks on other things there as well. Also, feel free to check out one of my videos up here. <laughs> and until the next one, y'all, as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me protect you out.